WeeBit Nano recently released a significant piece of news and a major milestone in their commercial development timeline. However, you might have missed it because it didn't flow through as an official announcement. So today we'll be discussing what ASXWBT's recent piece of news was and why it might be so significant for the story for WeeBit Nano moving forward. I thought it'd be an appropriate time for us to do a bit of a year in review for the WBT story. 2021 has been a transformative past year and we'll have a bit of a look forward as to the pathway towards commercialization for WeeBit Nano as they look to bring their reram memory to life. If you do enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. We make daily videos each and every day. So if you haven't yet, make sure you've subscribed, turn your bell notifications on as well, and you won't miss any of our daily episodes. So before exploring this major piece of news and what it could mean for the story, it probably makes sense for us to have a bit of a reflection on who is ASXWBT and where are they currently positioned. So we bit are developing reram memory technology. Reram is a form of non-volatile memory. As you know, the world is becoming more and more digitally integrated, technology is becoming more complex, and we're moving to smaller geometries. And as a result of that, alternative memory solutions are necessary. The current incumbent memory technology is flash memory, which you might be familiar with. However, there are alternatives that are being sought, and ASXWBT's Reram is one of those potential solutions. On their pathway towards commercialization, Webit will be focusing initially on the embedded memory market, where they'll be embedding their reram memory onto other customers' chips where that can go into their products. But ultimately, they're also going to be exploring the discrete market in years to come as more of a medium-term goal. Another factor about WeeBit that's attracted a lot of attention is they have a world-class leadership team, both at the board level as well as the management team too. It's quite a fascinating team and they're really using their years of experience in the semiconductor space to bring this project to life. Keen to know your thoughts on it all too, so drop in a comment below what you think about WeeBit Nano, what was your take on the recent piece of news that came to market, and where do you think ASX WBT heads from here into 2022 and beyond? And so you might be wondering, why do we need RERAM? What's wrong with the current memory solutions? What does RERAM actually provide? So as mentioned, RERAM is an emerging non-volatile memory technology, and flash memory at its core is no longer efficient, particularly as we get towards smaller geometries. At the moment, flash memory becomes inefficient below 40 nanometers and below. However, as we use more and more complex technologies, we are getting towards smaller and smaller geometries. You only have to think about the different types of technologies that we're using as the Internet of Things technology proliferates through our day-to-day -day usage with wearables, with AI, with automotives. All of these different technologies are requiring new types of memory solutions and RERAM has the ability to be one of those alternatives. RERAM has the potential to be faster, it's more energy efficient, it has greater endurance, and it's also an often more cost-effective solution versus some of the incumbents. And WeeBit's RERAM also has an additional benefit on top of all of that in that they use silicon oxide. And we know that the majority of semiconductor fabrication is done using silicon. Obviously, it means it's easier to tool, it's often cheaper, and it means it's a faster route to market as well versus having to tool with alternative materials, which may be difficult or more difficult to qualify. It's a fascinating offering. A reminder as well, before we dive in, I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing we discuss on the channel is financial advice. The stocks we cover are obviously not buy recommendations. These are all just general discussions to be that starting spot for you to do your own research from. So 2021 in review. Seems like it was just around 12 months ago when WeeBit was last raising capital around the $1.70 share price. And since then, not only has the ASX WBT share price moved ahead in leaps and bounds, but most significantly, there's been a range of commercial progression, but also technical progression in terms of development, both on the embedded and the discrete side. Having a look at it here, it's been quite a transformative year. Obviously, they've made a range of different appointments, really bolstering out their leadership and management team as discussed. But in terms of development on the technology side, they demonstrated the industry's first commercial integration of an OTS selector, which becomes really interesting on the discrete side. They've completed the final design, verification and tape out of their embedded memory module test chip. More on that later on in this video. They've obviously expanded the strategic partnership with Letty. They've built out their patent portfolio as well. RERAM was successfully demonstrated at 28 nanometer, which really feeds into the move towards smaller geometries and the fact that RERAM has the ability to be scalable at lower geometries. Obviously, 28 nanometer is a sweet spot, but we know that technologies are getting smaller and smaller and RERAM does have that potential to scale. So we'll be, investors will be looking for more potential insights surrounding RERAM's use at lower geometries moving forward. And most significantly over the past couple of months, we've been raised with an institutional raise over $25 million, as well as also providing a component for retail investors to get involved and they're now well capitalized to really fund and fuel that growth over the next year. 
And so that brings us to this major piece of news. It wasn't released as mentioned through the ASX announcement. I would imagine that it was probably not deemed as material enough to be released through that forum. So as a result, Weebit put this out on their Twitter and through their own individual forums, but it was quite a significant milestone as they've highlighted here in terms of the company's commercialization roadmap and it was achieved on time. So what's happened? Weebit have received the first silicon demonstration wafers where they've integrated their embedded RERAM module. This is a major step forward. They obviously now have their hands on these test demonstration chips, which can be used for testing, characterization, further qualification, and will actually be used for qualification with Skywater. But most specifically as well, you can see here on the bottom line, these demonstration chips allow customers to run applications to test Weebit's reram technology, and they can send these out to customers to get their hands on it, to start prototyping, to get their head around what reram's capabilities are before potential commercial orders and volume production for their specific chips. We've been have taken their time out. They've developed these test system on a chips. Obviously, they now have their hands on these first ones. This is a major step towards commercialization. Obviously, now that they have these wafers in hand, they'll cut the chips out. They're able to send these to customers, helps them with their qualification as discussed. But it really is this next step forward as they continue on the roadmap towards commercialization. Obviously, having great results in the lab is one thing, but as you move towards commercialization and commercial scale, it's another thing. And the Weebit team are continuing to take the steps forward on time. And so just distilling all what it really means down, this was some further insights that Weebit provided with their news flow over the past couple of days. So they've been working with their development partner Letty to successfully manufacture the demo wafers. As you can see from here now, these wafers will be sliced up into chips, packaged, set, tested, ultimately qualified, and then they will actually be used for the qualification process in Skywater, which they're hoping to complete by the end of calendar year 2022. Along with that, these chips can be sent to customers, but you can read here, Kobe Hanok, the CEO of Weebit, have provided his own narrative on it. He stated that they're proud to deliver another significant commercialization. The demo chips integrating the Weebit module will support the adoption of technology by potential customers. Investors are always thinking, where will the commercial agreements come from? What are the next steps forward? This is a step that really helps to accelerate the potential of agreements, or at least the ability for customers to get more of an idea about what RERAM could provide into their product. They can provide these customers with a fully functional RERAM technology, ready to be integrated into their SOCs to facilitate that design of new embedded products. Obviously, it didn't come through as an announcement, which was unfortunate. The market reacted on the day the news came out with a plus 13% rise upwards. So evidently, investors thought that there was something to take away from this piece of news. But it will be interesting to see what flows through moving forward. Keen to hear your thoughts on it all too. So drop in a comment below what you took from this piece of news and how do you think it sets up the WBT story for the year up ahead? And I think another interesting thing to reflect on is the major commercial agreement that we saw come through in the back end of 2021. Webit Nano have officially signed their first commercial agreement. It's their first step towards productization of RERAM. And it is a licensing agreement with Skywater, which is a US-based fab, to incorporate RERAM into the customer products. It's a conventional semiconductor agreement, so there's an initial licensing fee up front. And then obviously, as RERAM gets embedded into customers' products, there will be royalties paid on as a result of that. RERAM is to be qualified in Skywater's fab over the next year. They're aiming for that completion for calendar year 2022. And I think what's important about that is, yes, qualification with Skywater obviously opens up the ability for customers to then have RERAM embedded with their products through Skywater's fab. But a qualification at Skywater's fab also has some benefits for further potential qualification. And it's great validation for the technology too. So other customers might be waiting to sign agreements, waiting for this qualification to be complete, but it opens up many other doors. This is a non-exclusive license as well. And so as a result of that, the WBT team do have the ability to continue in other negotiations and discussions with other fabs around the world, as well as also on an individual customer basis too. This, there was also a cooperation agreement as part of this deal, both on a marketing and a sales alignment. And there is going to be a focus really on this collaboration, both from Weebit and Skywater to grow the sector and to grow the opportunity moving forward. And I think just reflecting on the ASX WBT share price, as mentioned, over the past 12 months, there was a capital raise in and around that $1.70 price at the back end of 2020. I'm sure investors for Weebit will remember a similar type of period. The share price has traded in and around that cap raise price, similar to what it's doing now around this 284 level. But then obviously into January, it really accelerated upwards from there. It'll be fascinating to see once the share price has digested this capital raise in and around these mid 280s level, what will happen, whether it can retest at the $3 mark, whether it can move higher. 
Webit has ended the year around 20 to 25% up in terms of year-to-date performance. But I think most significantly, it's not really about the share price performance in the short to medium term. It's really about the development of the technology on an R&D front. Obviously, the embedded aspect continues moving forward. R&D is focusing on that discrete side, but it's really putting all of the ducks in alignment to really be able to push forward on the commercialization front over the next few years. And WBT look like they've been delivering on that thus far. It's going to be fascinating to see what's up ahead for Webit. They're trading in around that 400 million dollar market cap obviously there's a range of different opportunities up ahead for webit to be pursuing too as we can see here here are a couple of the key highlights that webit nano provided in their last agm presentation about their focuses for 2022 first of all if you have enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the like button feel free to share it out if you're new here welcome we make daily videos so make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on as well as we can see here some of the key focuses First and foremost, completing that transfer of embedded re-ramp to Skywater and running the qualification process at Skywater. This will be played out over the next 12 months, but it definitely has implications for the potential for commercialization moving forward from that. Providing functional test results of the embedded re-ram module. Obviously, the test chips have now come through, which is a significant achievement. And it'll be interesting to see any commercial discussions that flow through from that, or just any insights surrounding the uptake or the potential adoption of customers as they can get their hand on re-ram. And then also on the other side, continued development of discrete memory technology. This is more of a medium term goal, but it is a huge market. The discrete market is a massive one. And if we better are able to capture that while continuing to pursue the embedded memory market, it looks like a pretty fast fascinating growth runway up ahead. Obviously, it's all about execution. It's all about delivery from here for the ASX WBT story, but it looks like there definitely is an interesting roadmap and it's one that will be worth watching moving forward into 2022. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the video. Happy new year and looking forward to the year up ahead. For now, stay well and happy investing.